In this video, I will show you how to track video player interactions with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. But Google Analytics 4 has a built-in video tracking. Yeah, but at the moment, GE4 supports only embedded YouTube video tracking. And in some cases, GE4 will not be even able to track those YouTube videos by itself. That's why we will use Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you are new here, this is the place where I teach how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. And if you want to learn how to use them faster and more efficiently, consider subscribing to this channel. So, as you already know, GA4 has a built-in video tracking feature, but in some situations, it is quite limited. In this video, we will take a look at how to track YouTube videos in Google Tag Manager and GA4 because that is more flexible. Then we will learn how to track different video player. And at the end of this video, I will share three power tips that will stop you from wasting time while tracking video engagement. So make sure you stick around till the end of this video. All right, so let's dive in. Here I am on a demo page where I have two embedded video players. The first one is YouTube and the other one is Vimeo player. Now, first, let's take a look at how can we track the embedded YouTube video player with Google Analytics 4. Here I have a Google Tag Manager container and in it I already have one tag which is G4 configuration tag. Now let's enable the preview mode and check what we will see in the preview mode related to video tracking. So I will click the preview button right here. Then I will copy the URL of that page, click start and now I will click play. However, if we go back to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, you will see that there are no video events right here. So if you want to enable YouTube video tracking, you have to go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, click New, Trigger Configuration, and then select a YouTube video trigger. Here you have to enable several checkboxes of what kind of interactions do you want to track. So I will keep Start and Complete enabled, and also I will add Progress. Here you can enter thresholds that you want to track when a visitor watches more than, let's say, 10%, 50%, and so on. So let's say that I am interested in 5% just for demonstration purposes, but in real projects, I would probably enter just 25, then 50, 75, and 90. I entered five right here just so that I could debug this faster in my demo website right here. Then you should enable this checkbox and name this trigger. Click save. And then we have to go to variables and enable built-in video variables. So click configure right here and then scroll down until you find video variables. Enable all of them by clicking these checkboxes. And when you stop seeing this loading saving, you can enable the preview mode once again, or in other words, actually, you can refresh it. So let's click it to refresh. And now let's try to play the video once again. I click play, I pause, and then in the preview mode, I will see two YouTube video events. He's, this is the first one, I click it and then I go to variables and here you will see that my video variables contain some value. So we have things like status, which is start, then we have video URL and all the other stuff, for example, video percent. Now, if I go to the next event, I will also see start, which is kind of weird because I clicked start only once, but I have two events right here. This is happening because you probably have enabled the built-in YouTube video tracking in GA4 as well. So you should go to the admin of your GA4 property, data streams, select your data stream right here, then click this gear icon and disable video engagement. Disable it and click save. Now let's refresh the page once again. Then I hit play. I will go to almost the very end and then I will let this video finish playing. And now the video has finished. And here I should see two YouTube video events, but the first one should be start and the other one should be complete. So now everything is working properly and we are not getting any duplicates. So the final step is to send these YouTube video interactions to Google Analytics 4 as events. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, and create a new GA4 tag. Click New, Tag Configuration, and then select GA4 Event. Now we have to come up with some event right here. In fact, we can apply the same naming convention that is used by the built-in YouTube video tracking. So if you go to Google search and enter G4 enhanced measurement, you will find a page. And here in this page, you will see a table with events like video start, video progress, and video complete. So in fact, we could use these same event names right here. And we can do that by entering video 
underscore, and then we can use the variable that will return either start, progress, or complete. And in fact, that variable is built in Google Tag Manager. Its name is video status. So if you go back to your tag creation process, here you should click this button to start adding the variable. And here you should keep looking for video status. So video underscore video status. When this tag is fired, this variable will be replaced with value, which is either complete, start or progress, exactly as it is named right here. Then we can send some additional parameters. For example, what kind of video was it? What is the video percentage during that particular event? And in fact, we have a bunch of parameters right here that we can just use in our setup as well. So let me just quickly copy paste all of these parameters. I will copy video duration and then all the other parameters like this. I'm not planning to use this visible right here, but if you want, you can add it as well. However, keep in mind that none of these parameters are required. I'm just basically following this naming convention because Google Tag Manager can provide built-in functionality that will return these values. So speaking of values, in these fields, we should insert variables that will return current time, duration, and some other stuff. Luckily, the built-in video variables can do that. Let's click on this button and select video current time. Then for the video duration parameter, we should select video duration. And let's repeat that same action for all the other parameters right here. And after we have configured all of these parameters, it's time to select a trigger. In triggering section, click anywhere and then select the YouTube interactions trigger that we have recently created. Now let's name the tag. I usually like to enter event names here because it will make my search in the future a bit easier. Save the tag. And one more thing that I have forgotten is that I should select my G4 configuration tag, then click save. And let's test whether this is working properly. Click preview, then the preview mode will refresh. And now let's play the video. Then I will skip and let this video complete. Here I have two events in the preview mode. On both of these events, my G4 tag fired. Now let's go to GA4, then debug view. And here I should start seeing some events, for example, video start, video complete. And if you click any of them, you will see that we have sent some parameters as well, like video duration, video provider, video percent, and all the other stuff that was configured in the tag. Now, one last thing, if you want to start seeing these parameters in your GA4 regular reports, is that you should register these parameters as custom dimensions. So for example, if you want to use the video title as a parameter in your other reports of Google Analytics 4, you should copy this name right here, which is video underscore title, and then go to custom definitions, create custom dimension, and here you can enter the name of the parameter. And in this first field, you can enter a more user-friendly variant, for example, video title. Keep the scope as event. You can leave the description empty and click save. And then within the next 24 hours, you will start seeing video events right here by going to events. And also in reports, you will be able to start using that video title parameter. If you are interested, for example, in using some other parameters as well, like video percent, then you will have to create a custom dimension for that as well. All right, so these were the steps of how can you track YouTube video interactions on your website. But what about video players? For example, Vimeo. Well, let's take a look. We have already enabled the YouTube video tracking in Google Tag Manager, but if I click the video right here, click play, pause, you will see nothing related to Vimeo player. This is happening because different video players require different methods of how can you track them. For example, if you want to start tracking embedded Vimeo players on your website, you will have to add some custom code that is designed to keep looking for Vimeo interactions. And once some interaction occurs, you will see that interaction in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. In fact, below this video, you will find a link to my blog post where I explain how to track video players with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. And one of the sections in that blog post is about Vimeo tracking. So you should keep looking for a section that says Vimeo Auto Event Listener. And here you should copy this code right here from the beginning till the end. It's actually quite a lengthy code, but it should work. So copy the entire code, then go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, New, and then click on Tag Configuration, and then choose Custom HTML Tag. Here you should paste that entire code. And in the triggering, you should create a new trigger of which type is window loaded. Now let's name this trigger click save. And the final step that we have to do is to 
name this tag. I usually name them like this, which is chtml. That stands for custom HTML and then enter Vimeo listener because this code will be listening for various interactions of Vimeo players. And once something is noticed, that something will be visible in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. Click save. Now let's refresh the preview mode and then let's interact with the player. I clicked play, I clicked pause. And here we have two events. One is video and the other one is also video. If you click any of them and expand the data layer push by clicking here, you will see that we have some data. We have video action, which is play. We have video URL, which is this URL. And we have video percent, which is this one. Obviously right now it will be zero because I've just started watching the video. But if I click somewhere at 50% and then let this video play, you will see that the video value has changed. So even though our custom listener did not add to the data layer that much data compared to YouTube video tracking, but this is still something that we might find useful. So first of all, what we can do is that we can copy the existing event of video start, video progress and video complete because this one is for YouTube interactions. And if we click on it and make a copy, we will fire this copied tag only on Vimeo interactions. So let me just rename this tag. I can also probably enter Vimeo. It will make this tag easier to distinguish from the YouTube tag. And here we have to configure some fields. For example, video status variable, which is right here, it will not be able to access this parameter because video status is completely different thing than this parameter. So if we want to access this particular value, we have to create a data layer variable that will return video underscore action. So let's delete this variable, then click this button right here, click plus, and then create a new variable of which type is data layer variable. And here we should enter video action. Then let's name the variable itself and click save. Basically, this data layer variable will do the same thing as video status in the YouTube example, but video status variable is working with the YouTube setup, but video action variable is working with this setup. Now video current time, let's take a look whether we have some variable that we can use instead of this one current time. No, we don't have anything about current time, so we can delete this one. Now video duration. We don't have anything about the video duration. So fortunately we have to delete this one as well. Now video percent. And in this case, we indeed have some parameter, which is video percent, but this one is named a bit differently. This one is video underscore percent. Therefore we have to copy this and create a new data layer variable. So I deleted the previous value and I will create a new data layer variable by clicking this button, then variable configuration, data layer variable, and pasting this name right here. Then I will name the variable itself, click save. Now in the video provider field, we know that this is Vimeo player because this entire setup is for the Vimeo player. So we can just enter Vimeo or you can remove this parameter if you don't plan to use this. Then video title, we don't have video title, but we have the video URL, which is available right here, video URL. So instead of this variable, which works only with YouTube setup, we should remove that variable, click the button and create a new data layer variable of which name is video URL. Exactly like this, all lowercase and with underscore. And then name this variable, save it. And then if we want to fire this tag every time a Vimeo interaction happens, or in other words, when this video event occurs, we have to get rid of the YouTube trigger and create a new trigger of which type is custom. So in the trigger configuration, click anywhere, then select custom event and then enter video. We enter video here because this is the value of the event key right here. Then let's name the trigger like this and then hit save. So every time a video event occurs in the data layer, or in other words, right here, and the name of that event is video, this trigger will be activated and it will fire this tag that will send video start or video pause or video progress event with these parameters. So everything looks good. Now click save. Oh, once again, I forgot to insert the G4 configuration tag. And now let's click save. All right, so let's test the Vimeo setup. Click preview button to refresh the preview mode. And then let's click play. I will click pause, maybe do some interactions here and there. And here I have a bunch of video events. We have this one, we have this one. And if I go to debug view of Google Analytics 4, I will see a bunch of new video events right here, like video pause, video play. By the way, Vimeo listener is also sending video pause events. 
Then we also have events like video progress. So if you click it and then go to video percent, you will see that particular threshold that was passed by the viewer of the video. Vimeo listener is tracking the following thresholds, which is 25, 50, 75, and 100%. And just like it is with YouTube events, you will start seeing your Vimeo events in the events section as well. However, you will not be seeing that data in real time. So it takes some time for GE4 to process it and display in reports. It might take several hours, but you should be prepared to wait for up to 24 hours. And now, as I have promised, here are my three power tips when it comes to video tracking. So if you're dealing with some other video player, not Vimeo or YouTube, then feel free to take a look at my blog post that will show you various techniques of how to deal with other video players. For example, a generic HTML5 video player. Then the second tip is that in some cases, YouTube video trigger will not work for particular videos. So if that is your situation, try delaying the trigger. Instead of having it enabled on DOM ready, try to enable it on window load, then save and try. Maybe this will help. And the third tip that also might help you when YouTube tracking is not working is that you could go to templates of your web container and then in tag templates, click search gallery. And then in the search bar, you can enter YouTube and you will find this tag, which is YouTube iframe API loader. Click this, add to workspace, add, and then go to tags and create a new tag, which is using that new custom template that you have imported, and then fire this tag on all pages. Then name this tag, for example, YouTube API, and hit save. Now, refresh the preview mode and try tracking that video, which is not working for you again, because there is a very high chance that it will help. If your YouTube video tracking is still not working, then I will post a link below this video where you can read these tips and hopefully they will help you troubleshoot your issue. And that is how you track video engagement on your website with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.